Okay, hello, hello friends. Holy smokes, I'm so sorry that I was just a couple minutes late coming in. The second I went to go live, there was a little techie glitch. So, hello, happy Friday. Holy smokes, it's Friday. What a beautiful week it's been. I hope it's been beautiful in your world and where you are. Um, I see some people popping in. I see Cherie. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Wendy. Good morning. Wendy says, good morning from Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. I've been working in my PJs. It's so fun to work in your PJs. Hello, hello, hello. I am very excited to be here today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I have a fun watercolor technique I'm going to share. Today, I'm going to focus our watercolor technique on, woo, that one just went flying, on using brush markers and a really easy going watercolor technique with brush markers. So we're going to have some fun, going to make a really fun card. Um, I'll start to go down to my down camera here. We've got um, 13 of us in here. It's great. I love it. I get so excited. I know you all hear me see that say hear me say that every time I go live how excited I get when you're all able to join me. Um Connie just popped in and just popped in. I'm just excited for everyone to be here. Really really easy card to share today and I am going to focus a bit on the watercolor technique versus like watching me stamp out things, but I am going to talk you through everything. And the supplies that I'm using, even though I'm going to walk through them, they will be listed down below in the, in the description right after the live. So, hi, Robbie. No worries about being late. I was late getting in. I was literally ready to come in and something happened with my microphone. And I definitely wanted to make sure everybody could hear me. And it looks like everybody can. And everything is set up really nicely. So... Okay, I'm going to go to the down camera. Let me move my keyboard here. I'm going to go to the down camera. And remember, you can ask questions along the way in the chat. And my chat is right up here on my screen, so I can see them. And there isn't that many of us in here that I can't um, engage with you and share uh, thoughts with you. So if you have thoughts or if you have questions or comments, just pop them in the chat. So let's go ahead and hi, Pam. It's great to see you. It's great to see everyone. I was on, I wasn't here last week. We didn't do a live last week. I was on vacation with my family and it was just awesome. <laughs> Went to the beach and thank you, Wendy, for letting me know the audio is good. Went to the beach and relaxed and also, you know, had long walks and just some really easy going downtime to think up new ideas. I also read three books while I was on vacation on the beach, which is unheard of for me to read three books in a week, but I did and it was super fun. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and go to the down camera and talk through the supplies that I'm going to be using. Let's go ahead and get the, get the glasses up here. Okay. I've got a lot here. Because we're going to be doing some watercoloring. Hi, Beverly. Beverly just popped in. Here is our card inspiration for today. And here is the card that we're going to make together today. So we're going to do an easygoing watercolor technique with brush markers. And I'm going to walk through two watercolor techniques with them. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk through the supplies. Cheryl said, I love those kind of vacations. I do too. It's very, very low key and easy going. Um, I see a little shadow here. I'm going to try to fix that. Um, here we go. Easy going. I'm going to adjust my camera here a little bit too. There we go. Easy going. Read a lot of books. Just kind of, you know, just didn't make big plans on this vacation, just kind of did whatever came naturally. So super fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the supplies for today. I am using my card base and all of my stamped out images. I'm using 
Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. I'm using hot press paper. Now you, everybody in here has watched me before on lives and I use hot press paper a lot for paper crafting projects because it's very smooth and it's easy to work with. So it's very, very, very smooth. It can take quite a bit of water but it is a great entry into using watercolor and using 100% cotton paper. I also used, I cut out a piece using the Master Layouts die from Gina K Designs. I love this die. I use it all the time. I think it's a really nice finish with this, um, this little um, stitching, like that stitched look there that goes around it. It also gives it a really nice finish. So I tend to use it like all the time. My card base is Turquoise Sea with Gina K Designs. It's cut to an A2 sized card. And I just love that color. And it's a nice neutral blue to allow for all the contrast that we're going to create on this piece of card stock. So super fun. Okay, I am using Treat Yourself, which is my latest release with Gina K Designs. Um, if you haven't seen this release yet, I've got two videos ago. I have a, a, two, a um, release video showing you a lot of different samples. If you're on my email list, you've seen, um, you've seen a lot of the samples. You've also seen a last, not last week, but the week before's tutorial. And I just want to mention real quick, I share all of my sample cards in my social media feeds and over on the Gina K Designs group, but sometimes we don't see everything, right? Sometimes everybody doesn't see everything in social media and it's kind of sad because I don't think everybody sees everything I post. So if you absolutely don't want to miss something that I have to share or post, uh, head on over to my website and go to indigojadeart.com um, backslash subscribe. I'm going to put it in the chat. Indigojadeart.com backslash subscribe, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, I just put it in the chat. You can go over to my website and you can, if you, if you are interested, you can subscribe to my email list. Hi, Marita. And I send out an email usually every week, but mo mo most likely it's around three times a month where I'm sharing all of my tutorials, all of the upcoming things that are happening, all of the freebies, any kind of special that I'm offering, always going to be on my email list. So if you're in social media, in the group, and you're not seeing things or you're missing things from me, if you get on my email list, that's kind of a really great way to make sure you don't miss anything. So just want to put that out there. I'm totally not a requirement, but um, at all in any way. But I just wanted to let people know because sometimes I hear from you uh, people in the direct messages and saying, are you doing a live this week? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And I always answer my direct messages. I do. But um you know, I put that information out in my email list too. So it would come right to your inbox. Okay. Crafty Maker NV said the bouquet wrap that stamp set also makes a great waffle cone. It actually, it's really interesting that you say that. It is a waffle cone, but my inspiration for the, the cone of flowers, and I'm getting ready to stamp it out because we're going to get started, was, um, was the cone the paper wrap cone that I got with um, my flowers that I got from the farmer's market on a Saturday from a local flower farmer here in Maryland called Tierra Blooms. And that was totally the inspiration. And I wanted to create a ice cream cone of flowers. So that's the total inspiration for all of the cards that I've created and the sample cards that I've created for this set. So it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. It's kind of neat. The bouquet wrap. It is kind of like the um, bouquet of flowers. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started and dive in. The first thing that I'm going to do, 
Oh, I forgot to go through the rest of the supplies. Sorry about that. Okay, here are the inks that I'm going to be using. I'm using... Hi, Beverly. She says she's in Maryland, too. Cool. Yes, I'm in Maryland. Gina K. Designs Amalgam Ink. I'm using Obsidian. So we've got a mix of... I'm using Obsidian Amalgam Ink because I'm going to be doing watercoloring. And this color is not going to bleed or run because it's Amalgam. I've got Jelly Bean Green. I've got Grass Green. I've got Innocent Pink. And I have Passionate Pink. And those are the colors that I used. I've got some glue, Gina K Designs Connect Glue. And I also have these um, ink essentials. These are from Ranger Enamel Accents because I'm going to do just some really simple black dots instead of gemstones this go. And I have a water brush. This is from Pentel. Oh Lord, I clearly did not turn that off. Sorry about that. Okay then, you got to see that someone was calling me. So that's not good. We need to uh, we need to make sure we have things on Do Not Disturb. Sorry about that. I hope I don't get another call. If I do, I'm sorry. But that was my friend Carla, and she is in the process of buying a house out near me. So I'll have to call her back after the live. You gotta love lives, right? Okay. So I have some Karen brush markers here and I also have some um, Zig clean color brush, real brush markers. And that's what I'm going to be using today and talking about watercolor techniques. And I also have this water brush and this is from Pentel. So we'll talk about that and we'll dive into that. I think of color. I am Cherie. Yes. Super funny that someone called me. Um, in the middle of the live, which I thought I had all that turn turned off, but you know, whatever, you know me, I'm super fun, super casual. Um, Marita said I could use Gina K's black sequins too. I thought about that and we might end up using those, Marita. We'll see. Okay. Let's get started. I'm going to get started with um, the uh, Gina K designs amalgam and the passionate pink. So first I'm going to stamp out my um, cone, my waffle cone on to my card base. And again, I'm using the obsidian ink and I'm using the hot press paper. Now I'm just turning this sideways because I'm going to stamp it this way because I can see it better. I can kind of line it up a little bit better. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that down, give it a little rock. And that's kind of in the center. I'm a little off, but that's okay. So that's in the center of where I want it to be. And now I'm going to take, let me clean off my block a little bit. I'm going to take the scoops of roses from the Treat Yourself stamp set. And I intentionally designed the roses. Dun, dun, dun. Let's close this up. To be like little scoops of ice cream. And I'm going to stamp that right here. Now it's going to be a background layer. We're not going to see much of it, but it's going to be peeping out a little bit with our final card. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink that up. And that's why I'm inking this up in a light color. I'm using obsidian here because I want that contrast. Uh, to come through uh, with the card. So, holy smokes. Holy smokes. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. And I'm going to stamp it right here. Just right over top of the cone. Just kind of get that up in the screen a little bit. Now, don't panic because this little area right here just kind of looks messy. But we're going to be adding layers of stamped images on top and you're not even going to see it. So we're not even going to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside because I want to do the watercolor. I want to walk through two watercolor techniques with the brush markers. So 
there are lots of different brush markers on the market. There are Karen brush markers. That's what these are. These have ink in them. They're dye-based inks. There are clean, Zig Clean colors. There's Tombow's. There's Arteza brand. There's lots of different kinds of brush markers that you could use um, for these watercolor techniques. And the beautiful thing about brush markers is they're very easy to control the color because it's a pen and we're very much used to writing and designing or you know illustrating or doing anything with a pen or a pencil, right? So it's a pretty easy entryway into watercolor because you can really control what you're doing with a brush marker. So um, there we go. So I'm going to use the Karen brush markers. It's funny today when I was kind of exploring what watercolor technique I wanted to uh, talk about today, I realized I looked on my shelf of art supplies and I was like, holy smokes, I have so many brush markers. Um, I, I only run to them when I want to do a quick and easy watercolor technique. And then I was like, ah, oh, let's do a quick and easy watercolor technique today. Um, because it's a great, if you're interested in watercolor, but you're still feeling a little bit on the fence, it's a great entry point into watercolor trying out brush markers. So we're going to do two techniques. And if you have any questions along the way, just let me know about brush markers or any other kind of watercolor medium. We're going to do two techniques, direct to paper and ink what I call ink lift watercolor. So the direct to paper is just that. We're, we're using hot press paper. If you were late to joining, we're using hot press watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. Now, when you're using brush markers, I have found that it is best to try to use a smooth paper and it is best to use a watercolor paper. If you're using like your Gina K Designs cardstock or another white cardstock, it can't take a lot of layers. It, your paper will start to pill. So if you use a watercolor paper, it's more apt to not, the paper is more apt to not pill. Pill up. Pill meaning sometimes you could be coloring and all of a sudden you've got a big hole in your paper because that paper is not really able to handle um, water of any kind. So it will, um, it'll just break down. The paper will break down and you'll end up with a big hole in it. Okay, so I'm going to do some direct to paper here. And with direct to paper, it is exactly what I'm saying. You're taking your brush marker and you're coloring it down direct to paper. You're gonna see me move kind of fast. If I want to get this color to move, let's bring, let me activate that a little bit. If I wanna get this color to move and move relatively smoothly and quickly, I need to, I need to work a little quicker. So you can see I'm activating the color and I'm moving it and I'm able to use it as a paint. I'm able to add more water and I can go from um, a darker to a lighter color with this direct to paper. Um, Catherine just asked a question. Based on your recommendation, I got some of the Strathmore 100% cotton. Wow, what a difference it makes. It totally makes a difference. Any kind of 100% cotton paper, you'll see a huge difference in your watercolor outcome. Um, Susan just asked, I'm new to watercoloring. What's the difference between cold press and hot press? So hot press paper is smoother and watercolor, uh, cold press paper has a texture to it. It, it is hundred percent cotton watercolor paper will have more fibers that you can see in the texture and you can feel it. So those are the two real simple differences between the two papers. Um, Marita just asked, will this technique work with the Tim Holtz watercolor paper? Yes, it will. Um, both of these techniques will work with his paper. His paper is a, um, is a cellulose paper though, Marita. It's not 100% cotton and that's okay. It could work with his paper or a paper like Canson 
that's a cellulose paper. And what I mean by cellulose is that it's a wood pulp paper. So it's not technically 100% cotton. It's not 100% cotton at all. It's where they take the wood pulp and they mash it together and they make the paper. So it has a little bit of a um, texture to it, a smoother texture. And sometimes the colors will just sit on top a little bit more than with 100% cotton. The color will go into the fiber a little bit and spread. So those are the two differences. But Marita, it will work with that paper because his paper is a little bit smooth, smoother than some of the other 100% cotton, more textured papers. Okay, I hope that helps. So direct to paper, you can see that I was able to just apply that ink right to the paper and then move it around with my water brush. Now I'm using a water brush today because it's a very controlled way to apply color using this technique. But you can also, um, you can also do this technique with a, a, a brush, a regular brush and water. I just grabbed the water brush today because I, I felt like I wanted to play with it a little bit. Okay, so let's do direct to paper again one more time to, to show you. So I'm applying, again, I'm a left-hander, so I tend to be heavy-handed. Not all left-handers are heavy-handed. That's not what I'm saying. I am super heavy handed if I'm up close and personal to my pen. So if I'm working with a pen and I want a lighter touch, I tend to hold it out here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go direct to paper here and I'm working kind of fast. This is a very juicy pen. If I let this dry, it's going to stay in place and it'll be a little more difficult to move, not impossible but a little more difficult to move. So you can see how quickly I was able to move this and start to use this color as a watercolor. And it's very controlled. So it's not going all over the paper because watercolor mediums, whether it's watercolor from your tube or your um, pans or pens, I'm going to bring this up so that you can see. You can see some of the fibers. You can see some of the ink here. Now you see how smooth this is? There isn't, as compared to like the last tutorial I did where we talked about granulation, the texture that you're seeing here, that's paper. That's the fibers of the paper. So it's not the ink it's not the watercolor medium at all in this case. These are inks. So you could also do this technique with your, um, your Gina K designs, ink refills, things like that. So that's direct to paper. Okay. Ink lift watercolor. You know, what? let me show you, let me show everybody the zig. So that was the Karen brush markers. And what I really like about the Karen brush markers is they're super vibrant. They're very, very like high def vibrant. These are the Zig Clean Color Water uh, Real Brushes. These have been around a long time. I'll admit they're not my super fave. I don't love this brush because it's very, um, it splays, meaning it just kind of, um, see when I put the color down, it's kind of rough. I have to apply, I can get in there real, heavy handed and get get it um, a little more of a solid but it does the trick so you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these this to bleed out a little bit to blend out but if you work quickly with this technique you can get it to move and you can get some pretty vibrant looks to it and I'm digging it I like it but the, um, the reason why I like the Karen brush markers is because the brush tip is just a lot more, it doesn't, it's just a lot more stiff. And I just, I kind of love that. It doesn't splay. So when I say splay, I mean the tips of the brush marker doesn't like splay out and just show you kind of the, the fibers of the pen. So this one 
pen's display. You can see the very, very tip of that is just separating. Okay, that was a random nerdy fact about, um, <laughs> about the brush markers. All right, I wanna show you, now that this is dry, we're gonna come back to this. Now that this is dry, can I make it move? Can I go back and make it move? I can, but I gotta work at it. You can see I'm trying to like bleed out, blend out that little edge. I gotta work at it a little bit harder to kind of make it move and I'm not getting a lot of color to distribute after it has dry. And that's because A, it's dry and B, it's a dye ink. Once it's dry, it's dry. It's not gonna move with any kind of fluidity that you'd like it to move. So, all good. Now let's do some ink lift watercolor. There's two ways you can do this. You can take, lots of ways you can do it. You can take and put a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit down here on my glass mat. You could also use your block. Like I was doing that earlier, just kind of brushing it down on my block and working from working on it from there. Uh, Nan just asked, can you spell the Karen? Here, we'll just hold it up to, to the screen. K-A-R-I-N, Brush Marker Pro. And again, after the live, I'll have all of these supplies linked. You can see all this uh, ink on my hands. I'll have all the supplies listed down below. This is magenta, and I love this color because it's pink, and I love pink. Okay, I'm gonna take, I've taken a little bit of that magenta, and now I have an orange red. I'm gonna put a little bit of that down here because I'm gonna show you a little bit of color mixing. So I'm going to use my pen. Wendy said I got a set of Arteza brush markers to practice before graduating to Karen. That's a great idea. I have the um, Artezas as well. They're very much like the Zigs. Um, and you can do these same techniques with them and practice, practice, practice. Okay, all I'm doing here is I'm using the ink that I put down on my mat and I'm lifting it up with my brush and I'm just using it as a paint. So ink lift watercolor. So there's probably, I'm lifting the ink and I'm using the ink as watercolor. Okay, super simple very controlled way to use the marker. Now I'm gonna go in with my, um, to the orange red one and do it again. So you can see how vibrant that color is. And it goes a long way, it goes a really long way. But one of the other super fun things, let's just brush this off real quick, that you can do with this particular technique is you can blend colors together. So I've got two colors here and I'm going to bump them. I bumped them right up against each other. Now let's move this out of the way. Let's move that out of the way. And now, let me get, just to activate that, I'm going to activate this and just kind of blend these two colors together. And then you get another color, which is kind of fun. So you can do some really fun little ink blending. Or what I like to do is I'm going to pick up a color on one side, pick up another on the other and just kind of play with it and get that variegation of color from like oranges to pinks back to oranges and just have some fun with it. You can mix the whole thing together. Marita just asked, would the zig work better with the ink lift technique? I believe so. Yes, Marita, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show everybody that. So that is the Karen brush dye base marker. So let's go ahead. Now that everyone, Marita has asked about the zigs, let me show you with the zig. Which color do I have here? Light carmine. Does the water brush need cleaning between colors? No, good question. What I tend to do, Dawn, is I'll just kind of brush it off till I see that it's gone clear. Um, or not. So to see what you get, you know, you might get a nice little mix of colors. So here's the zig. I'm taking the zig and I'm just kind of uh, applying it to my um, glass mat here. It's effectively just getting the ink out. And now I'm going to take my Pentel 
and now I'm going to just go ahead and get that nice and juicy and then I can apply that's a really pretty color that light carmine and you can get those smoothie smoothie washy watercolor effects digging it loving it okay too simple easy going brush marker techniques for some really effective like high gloss high def look right for watercolor but really easy and very controlled so if you're just getting started in watercolor and you're feeling a little intimidated by pans and pigments and all the things that are out there but you've got some brush markers in your stash give this a go we're going to go ahead and dive into the part of the technique where we're going to apply what we've learned here okay if you have any other questions about direct to paper and the ink lift watercolor, just pop them in the chat. We're going to go ahead and move on to this little guy. And I think, hi Judith. I think I lost a whole little thing here for my scenes. I don't know what happened to it, but okay. Um, okay. I was going to move in a little bit. Sorry about that, but we're good. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to, am I missing my brown? No, here we go. I've got a brown here. So I've got a Karen brush marker. This is henna. And I'm going to do both of the techniques that I shared. I'm going to do direct to paper and that ink lift. So first I'm going to start and I'm going to work fast. I'm going to start from my bottom here and I'm just going to do what's called flicking. I'm flicking applying some of this color and I'm flicking away so I'm finding the edge of the cone and I'm just flicking up just to get a little bit of the color there on the bottom and I wanted to work a little bit faster here but okay and I'm going to go ahead and just start to flick I'm using the same flicking motion and use the color that I applied and flick up and out so that I can get my watercolor to go from dark to light and I get that variation of my tones here from dark to light just by doing this and it already looks pretty cool and I'm kind of digging it I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some color here and just pick that up and just kind of add a little bit of that over here. So I've got a little bit more darkness right here, but it's definitely a lot lighter. I'm going to go ahead. Um, Marita says, can we use these techniques with your other stamps? Too? Absolutely. You can use these techniques with any stamp in your stash, any brand, any stamp, these techniques. That's why I like to teach these techniques because it's universal knowledge. Once you have it and once you've practiced it a little bit, you can, um, you can use it with anything that you have in your stash. Um, Crafty Maker asked a question. Can you tell us why some people tape down their paper and some don't? Does it help with warping? Um, yes, it, it does. It can. I'm lazy and I tend to not tape anything down unless I'm working on a video project down because I feel like I'm working pretty fast. Um, it, a lot of times you'll see people tape things down because they're applying a lot of water to their paper and some papers will buckle if they're not taped down. Um, hundred percent cottons papers are going to buckle only if you're applying a ton of watercolor people of wa water. You can see right now I've applied quite a bit of water, but the paper's not really buckling at all um, and that's because I, I'm not hitting it with massive massive washy wet water um, crafty maker says you froze says my video keeps stopping I'm gonna keep going because I got a feeling everything looks good on this end it says I'm still live and I'm at a pretty high stream so just pop it in and let me know if something else is happening, maybe we had a little glitch. Okay. Right now, what I'm doing is just adding, now that it's dried a little bit, I've just gone back in and I'm 
adding a little bit more intensity to the bottom here, just in those flicks and just adding a little bit more color. So this technique is called like glazing, the technical term for it, or layering. I'm just layering another bit of color there um, so that we get a little bit of a depth of color from dark to light. Uh, Crafty Maker, does cotton paper not warp as much? Yes, cotton paper just does not warp as much because it can take on a lot of water and it disperses the water through the fibers of the paper. So it can take on a lot of water and that's why I like it so much for my paintings and my um, paper crafting projects because I like to use a lot of water. Um, everybody's saying looks like everything's good to go now. Yeah, very weird. You never know. It is noon and everybody's on the internet, right? So, okay, now we're going to put this aside and I want to talk about the other elements that are in the card. So I've got my hibiscus and I've stamped out, I've pre-stamped my hibiscus to save us a little bit of time today. I pre-stamped the hibiscus on the 100% cotton Strathmore paper and um, that's, and just go, went ahead and cut it out. I've got all of my leafery cut out for when we go to put the card together. And then I also have the little baby cabbage floral bloom stamped out and pre-cut just to save us a little bit more time so that we can focus on the water coloring. Okay, I'm gonna move all that over here. If you have any questions about the stamping, I just wasn't gonna stamp everything out. Um, everybody here knows how, to, knows how to stamp and normally I do that, but there were so many different pieces. It takes up more time to stamp and die cut all the elements. So I die cut them, pre die cut them for us so that we could focus on the techniques of adding the watercolor. Okay, Susan asked, or Susan, yes, asked, both Karen and Clean come with blender brushes. What are those used for? Essentially, they're used for the same thing that this is used for, water, to move the color. Now, um, I'm using, like I said, I'm using 100% cotton watercolor paper. I will tell you another paper that will that is not 100% cotton. It is a cotton paper, but it works very well with brush markers. Is a Bristol, so it's B R I S T O L, and it's a little bit of a heavier weight. Mixed media artists use it quite a bit because it can take different mediums. I I do enjoy using it with brush markers but you got to work a little bit faster to get a good blend or the paper will pill. And I have a video on, on my channel that talks about Bristol. So after the live, I will put that, I'll link that up in the description if anybody wants to take a peek at that Bristol paper. But in, in our next live paper, we'll bring the Bristol back in and maybe we'll talk about that. Okay, so I've got the browns done here. And you can see, I could go in again and add another layer, but I'm really liking this. And I'm really liking that little brush mark right there. It gives us a lot more added texture and dimension. Now, I did not go in and try to color each one of these little waffle areas. And I think this looks really good. We're going from dark to light. Not worrying so much up here about color because we're going to be putting stuff over top of it. So... Um, Catherine just shared, I use a low tack stick map to stick mat to avoid what, what, uh, the warping. It works well. And I can color background out to the edges of the panel. That's a great idea. Um, the low tack stick map and Catherine, you can pop that in the chat, what, which brand you use, but I think there's one by Brutus Monroe, if I'm correct. There's a bunch of mats out now that have like sticky, like a sticky to it that you can pull your project up and off of it without it ripping, but it holds things down for you. I haven't tried them out yet. So um, <laughs> probably because I'm lazy <laughs> um, when it comes to stuff like that. When I want to color, I just get going, but they look really, really cool. I've seen a lot of people using them for blending techniques, like with the brush blenders. Um, so super fun with that. Um, 
Okay. So let's go ahead. We're going to move on and we're going to do the, um, the hibiscus. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of both techniques with this hibiscus. I'm going to go in with the magenta right here and just kind of apply some color. And I'm working kind of quick because I want to get that blended out before it dries. Now the Karen brush markers and the brush markers tend to stay wet for just a smidge. Um, Brutus Monroe's sticky mat is really good. Bonnie said, Wendy said, I use the misty sticky mat. Oh, that's a good idea too. Um, Susan said, I love the Brutus Monroe easier to manipulate than the misty. Hi, Ruth. Good to see you. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. So our friends here that are joining us are sharing their favorite sticky mats, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and move into doing the next petal on my hibiscus here. And I'm just using that flicking motion with the direct of paper. And I'm going to go ahead and blend it out. Get a little water going. Blend it out to just get a little color around that edge. I'm already loving the way this is looking. Loving it. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and just kind of go over that stamen a little bit. That stamen where the hibiscus is um, in black, so it's not going to move. And I'm just moving that color around the petals to get it to activate and move. And already we're seeing like variations of color from dark to light. And this is just one of the easiest ways to, um, to just get that watercolor effect. Super, super simple and easy. Not a lot of fuss. Feeling very easy going. I am loving this. Loving the way this looks. I think it looks better than the one I did earlier. All right, I'm going to come in and finish this last petal. And let's go ahead and I'm using that flicking motion. I'll just go, I'll go over that flicking um, technique again. That technique, I used to teach Copic markers. I'm one of the certified instructors for Copic markers. And I used to teach Copic markers, oh boy, for like a good 10 years or so. Um, and I've been using Copic markers since, ah, since I was in design school. So late, late eighties, nineties, early, early nineties. But flicking is when you take your pen, your brush marker or your, pe or your Copic marker and, um, you start at the bottom and you're just flicking up and away and it's just a quick flick. I find that this technique is very, very easy to get paper, ink or marker applied to paper very, very quickly. So I tend to use it all the time when I'm adding some color. Let's take a look at that hibiscus. Look at her. You can see some of that color bleeding with the, with the um, water, digging it, love it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down with the orange. What color do I have here? Orange red. Um, Bonnie just said that's beautiful. I'm going to come down with the orange red here. And I'm going to lift that up. I'm going to ink lift this up. And I'm going to drop a little bit of that orange in the center. And just kind of move it around a little bit. So I'm cleaning my brush here. It's very vibrant. Look how vibrant it is. But it just adds another extra little bit of color. Ah, I'm loving it. It looks so good. It looks so good. Listen to me. It looks so good. Loving that. Super simple. The Karen brush markers, any brush marker, they're going to be really super vibrant. Um, but you get a lot of, look, I'm going to turn this to some of the light. 
so you can see kind of the variations of the color. Ooh, I'm really loving that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up because, you know, I got it all over my fingers. I cannot do any kind of art or paper crafting without getting all the things all over me, and I love it. I love it. Who else gets all the things all over them when they're creating? Some people are very, very neat and get nothing on them. But for me, mm, I make a huge mess. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to go in. I've got some Gina K inks. Not inks, Lise. Connect glue. Got some connect glue. And I'm always testing it. Let's test it on my hand. Make sure we're not going to gloop. We don't want to gloop. Um, okay. I see some people in the chat. That's gorgeous. A lot of people sharing in the chat their favorite sticky mat, which is awesome. Love that. Wendy said, I love this technique. It's not so scary. Exactly. It's a very easy going watercolor. I would say it's like super high on the watercolor look scale without a lot of fuss or feeling anxious about it especially if you're just getting started with trying out the look of watercolor on your projects Woo. okay i like to use the connect glue because it gives me some time to move things around and make sure things are straight and it dries clear for when i do those kinds of things where i get bloops um, inky fingers. Everybody's saying, yeah, inky fingers. Oi. Inky everything. I'll find that I'll I end up getting this stuff like all over me everywhere. All right. We're going to start by adding our layers to the paper. Hmm. I was thinking about a finishing technique there, but um, let's go ahead. We're going to start. I've got some foam tape here and I'm just going to go ahead and rip off some. Um, <laughs> Crafty Maker says, I'm, I am the messiest hot mess, but I have fun. Exactly. I feel like get out all your things, make a huge mess, have some fun with it. You've, you've craft your joy. Everybody's heard me say this, craft your joy. My online classroom is craftyourjoy.com. If you go to my website, indigojadeart.com, craft your joy. That's where you get all the free, um, the freebies craft your joy and what i mean by that is getting out all of your supplies and having some fun and you find that moment of joy in your crafting so craft your joy you're you're crafting your own joy through your experience with all your things love it okay so i popped that down on the card base with just that little tiny bit of lift because it's going to give me the ability to add all of my leafery and my little cabbage flower underneath it. Um, Wendy just said, I love crafting because it's a legitimate reason to stay messy. Yes. Yes. And if you have, if you have the ability to have a space that you can leave your project a little bit messy for a while, that's even better, right? Um, and you don't have to clean up every single time you make something. That's even more awesome. Okay, I've nested that little cabbage rose right underneath the hibiscus. So what it's doing here in the design is we've got the three scoops of cabbage roses behind it. And this little cabbage rose is just sitting on top. So it adds another extra level of dimension and texture without the height and it just looks so pretty on the card okay so now i'm just going to go ahead in and i'm going to start to add my leafery so just need my glue just add a little touch of glue here i'm going to pop in my leafery and just pop it in behind my hibiscus elements here um thank you bonnie thelma hi she said sorry i'm late no worries you can always catch the replay plus this has been a funny one thelma because my phone rang and it came on the screen, which is entertaining. And, you know, some other little weird techie things happened right before I was getting ready to go live. And friends, I prepare for the lives. We make sure all the tech is good to go an hour before it's ready to go. So, you know, it's 
sometimes things happen. And I think that's what makes it fun um, because that's real life, right? Real life things happen. Okay. I've got this big honking. I think I'm going to put it down here. I'm just going to nest this leafery down here. And the leafery is just kind of whoosh, whoosh, kind of going out and about. And I, but I don't want to cover up too much of my cabbage flowers. I want to cover up, you know, any kind of sign of, you see that little edge right there, of where my cabbage flowers met the cone. But, here we go. Loving it. All right, I've got my two little leafery pieces. Now, I did stamp my leafery out in two different colors, the grass green and the jelly bean green. So you end up getting a green, you end up getting a little more contrast with the two greens. Got a little bit of extra glue there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not sure where I want to put this. Let's see. Let's pop that there because that's what I'm feeling for that. And this, I'm going to kind of tuck this up and under. Do I want it down? Do I want it up? I'm going to tuck it up and under here. Yeah, digging it. Love that. Okay, so all of my leafery is in, in here, and I've got this explosion of leafery coming out of the card. I've got those three scoops and the little cabbage scoop here, and the contrast that we have are the two watercolor pieces the hibiscus and the cone and it's grounding the card because there's a little bit of black there and it's also really like high def in color okay lisa this is the first time i've caught you live and i've already learned a lot already oh that's great thank you bonnie i just need to go back and watch from the beginning yes that's a beautiful thing about these you can always go back and watch now i'm going to go ahead in with the enamel accents and just kind of start dropping in little bloops. Try to get my, make sure my finger doesn't go in there. And the reason why I like this one, two, three, four, let's do one right here, five. I'm just getting a feel for, I tend to do this to get a feel for if I feel like I need another one. And I do right there and then right there and then right there. And I'm just kind of using the enamel accents to kind of have your eye go round and round and round our focal point here of the hibiscus. Um, uh, Susan just said, love this. Wasn't sure how I would have made that, how I would have made the card using this set. Ah, very cool. I have so many samples of cards for this set. If you haven't had a chance to take a peek at that video, oh, I think you would really enjoy it. But here is the original inspiration for the card. And you can see that I just kind of went really, really light on the color. And then here is the final. And I am just digging it. I'm loving it. I'm loving the way it came out. It's so easygoing watercolor, super vibrant, all made within an hour. And now, I'm popping back to our front camera here. I had so much fun today talking about brush markers. I hope that you are all finding these lives very useful because I'm kind of doing, I kind of do my tutorials a little bit different than maybe others, other wonderful people in our paper crafting community do. I tend to um, focus a little bit more on the watercolor techniques and kind of embed a little lesson in between so that you can learn that lesson with watercolor pick that lesson up and apply it to any of the stamps or any of the um uh, the supplies that you have in your stash so uh, gloria asked me about a sentiment i'm not going to pop a sentiment on the front of this card i think i'm going to put it on the inside i have someone in mind that i'm going to send it to for a birthday. So I think I'm going to put the sentiment on the inside. Robbie said, you always intimidated me with your cards. Now I know you don't do them as difficult. I don't. My cards are not difficult at all. 
my cards might have the appearance of a lot of layers, but I'm really just using the stamps and maybe one or two techniques. The stamps are always the star of the show. And in my stamp sets with Gina Kay, I always have different elements to build with. And they're all of the stamp sets in my entire collection with Gina Kay are in proportion to each other. So you can mix and mash them up. And I have some mashup lives. I haven't done a mashup live, I think, in two lives. So um, maybe we'll do a mashup next week. Okay, everybody's saying they learned a lot. Extremely useful. I uh, Deborah just said, I just started with watercolors and I brought some watercolor markers. Great. You could use this technique with your watercolor markers. Um, I'm just digging the way this card came out. I'm so pleased. Um, you know, if you, when you go away for a, a vacation and you come back, you're a little bit rusty. So I'm so pleased with the way this card came out. I hope that you have found this tutorial very helpful. I have, if you are new to my channel, I have hundreds of videos and tutorials, and I tend to focus on a lot of watercolor techniques and some other techniques that and make them kind of watercolory. So, um, and I, again, I hope you find all these super, super helpful. If you're interested in anything Lisa Hetrick, you can always check out my website at indigojadeart.com. That's linked down below in the description right now. I also have the free card idea sheet for the Treat Yourself stamp set. The link is down below in the description if you haven't grabbed that. The, um, the supplies will be in there after the, the live. I'll get them in there today. And if you're at all interested in um, finding out more uh, about when I go live, um, different tutorials, when I have stamp set releases, and you're interested in jumping on my email list, you can find that in the description as well. There's a link there. I would love to have you join my email list. I put a lot into my emails that I send out every week. There's several people here today that are on my email list um, that I know, and I share a lot of freebies, and it's just uh, a gift of grace from me to you. I just love to be able to share, know that I put something out into the world, it drops into your email box, and it might be useful to you. So, Thelma just said, watercolor intimidates me. I did order the watercolor set from Amazon with the brushes. It says, as soon as I get it, I will try it. Yes, Thelma, try it. Try it, try it, try it. So, okay, we are at the top of the hour. We made it in an hour. So, um, I will see everybody next week. I will be going live next Friday. I think... We're going to do a card mashup. Not sure yet, but I will um, share that information in my email list and I will put it out in social media and I will also put it out in the Gina K Designs group. So I hope you have a great weekend. I'm sending you off into the weekend to craft your joy and I hope you have found this tutorial very, very helpful today. And thank you so much for joining me. It is an honor to be with you, and I'm so grateful to all of you who've taken the time to join me today. So I love you all, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.